Legacy. Welcome to WART Warrior TV. I'm Josh Collins. Today is Thursday, April 25th, 2013, and this is your World News. How much is a true heir worth? A whooping $1 billion according to an estimate from the Saudi government, which is searching for the direct descendant of a 19th century Indian nobleman because they want to offer the money as compare conversation. The mo the nobleman, Mayen Kudi Kiai, built a bungalow called Kiai Rubeth in Mecca, Saudi Arabia, in 1848 to provide shelter for friends and family traveling there for the Hajj pilgrimage. But the Saudi government demolished it in 1971, valuing the building, which was located close to the Holy Kaaba Shrine, around $1 million at the time of demolition. The value of the building has increased to $1 billion today. But as with all heirlooms, this one isn't without controversy. Mayin Kudi Kiai descended from the Kiais, who once controlled the spice trade in India. The Arakal and Kiai families were embroiled in feuds since the day of British rule in India. Attempted to intermarry and evaluate tendencies caused by the Sultan of Arakal's jealousy toward the Kiai's good fortune and wealth. That tendency was revisited when the Saudi government announced its search for the direct heir, heir of Mayen Kudi Kiai. While the Kiai family claims the money belongs to them because Mayen Kudi Kiai was unmarried when he purchased the property, the Arakal's content and they are the real inheritors. The Indian consult in Saudi Arabia has asked the Arakal family to appoint a legal advisor who will submit a list of descendants claiming the money. So far there are 45 takers. A large fire that began with explosions aboard two fuel barges in Mobile, Alabama was rocked by a seventh explosion earlier Thursday, and fire officials said they planned to let the fire, which has injured three, burn overnight. Firefighters from Mobile and U.S. Coast Guard officials responded after 8.30 p.m. Wednesday to a pair of explosions involving the gas barges in an area of the Mobile River east of downtown, authorities said. As they were responding, a third explosion occurred around 9.30 p.m., Additional explosions falling over the next few hours. The Coast Guard said earlier Thursday that a one nautical mile safety zone had been established around one barge, which is said was at the dock for cleaning. Three people were transported to University of South Alabama Medical Center after suffering burn related injuries. Hubbin identified them as workers with oil recovery companies. The three were in critical condition earlier Thursday. Across the river, the Carnival Triumph, the cruise ship that became disabled in the Gulf of Mexico last February before it was towed to mobile ports, was evacuated, said Alan Waugh, who lives at the Fort Condu Inn in downtown Mobile. Across the river from the scene of the explosions, Waugh saw the blast and said, Thons of Carnival employees and others were clustered on the streets leading toward the river as authorities evacuated the shipyard. It literally sounded like bombs going off around. The sky just lit up in orange and red. And he said, we could smell something in the air. We didn't know if it was gas or smoke. Juan said he could feel the heat from the explosion and when he came back inside, his partner noticed he had what appeared to be black soot and on his face. The intentional blast took place in a ship channel near the George C. Wallace Tunnel, 
which carries traffic from, the, from Interstate 10 under the Mobile River. The river runs south past Mobile and into Mobile Bay, which in turn falls into the Gulf of Mexico. The cause of the explosion was not immediately clear. Once the fire is down safe, a full investigation will take place. Mobile Fire Chief Steve Dean said he was confident the fire wouldn't spread to nearby industri industrial properties, including the shipyard where the Carnival Cruise, whose ship is docked. Now let's head over to Garrett for a look at our daily announcements. Garrett? Thank you, Josh. I'm Garrett Balser. Today is Thursday, April 25th, 2013, and these are your daily announcements. Attention all students who have not completed physical education too. Do you want to open up your schedule next year for AP, honors, or elective classes? Do you want a great opportunity to play tennis, ultimate frisbee, ragball, pickleball, badminton, golf, bowl, and other sports for cheap? Well, summer PE might be for you. If you are interested, see the guidance office or Mr. Ekovich as soon as possible to sign up. Classes are failing fast, so don't be left behind. Have you ever thought of becoming a radio personality? This is your chance. WARR Warrior Radio is in need of people to read intro spots for broadcasting. If interested, contact Mr. Huffman or Mr. Van Lu in the tech department. There will be no chess club after school this week. See Mrs. Baird for details. Today during Warrior Time, all sophomores and juniors who signed up for pre-calculus, pre-calculus honors, dual credit, econ, and art appreciation should meet in the auditorium during Warrior Time. Academic Super Bowl members, please turn in your banquet reservations and money to Mrs. Harris by next Monday. Impact slash FCA will be hosting a movie night soon. We are showing the movie to save a life this coming Monday, April 29th in the cafeteria from 6 to 8.30 p.m. Everyone is welcome to come. Did you know that a pop tab is not just on cans of pop? They are now found on all sorts of food items for, from canned veggies to potato chips. Donate your tabs to the Key Club seniors that you would like to see duct taped to the cafeteria wall. Collection containers are located in the cafeteria annex. The FFA banquet is tonight here at the high school. We like, to, we like all of the members to be in FFA official dress and at the main entrance of the high school by 6, 10 p.m. You will be greeting the parents and guests as they arrive to the banquet. Attention any 9th, 10th, or 11th grader thinking about going to college, Earlham College in Richmond, Indiana is offering their annual Explore College program this summer where you can experience college life by living in a dorm and taking a class with a college professor. You will earn college credit for the course that you can be transferred to other schools as well. The program takes place from June 23rd through July, 20, July 6th and classes that are available include college writing, diversity, make a difference, economics of personal finances, environmental chemistry, equine studies, that's horses, exploring human behavior, French, Japanese, insects, philosophy of film, and photography. See Mrs. Goff for more information or pick up an application in the guidance office. Would you like to win $50? Are you creative? Well, Smoke Signals is teaming up with the art department to host a Create Your Own Superhero competition. This competition gives you opportunity to draw, paint, or sculpt your favorite teacher or faculty member into a superhero. The top five students' picks, along with Mr. Eby's top pick and Mr. Stella's top pick, will be displayed in the 2012-2013 Lit Mag. Here are the prizes. First prize is $50, second prize is $25, and third prize is $10. Rules for the competition are as follows. Your superhero slash villain must be based on a current Wallace High School teacher or faculty member. Your superhero or villain can be your own idea or based on an established superhero or villain such as Superman or Batman and etc. Provide one paragraph about your choices made for your superhero or villain with your finished product. No photography or Photoshop will be accepted. It must be school appropriate and you must have a signature from your chosen teacher with your finished product. 
see Mr. Eby or Mr. Seller or Mrs. Ann Hart with questions or feel free to take one of our flyers from around the school. Please turn entries in to Mr. Eby, Mr. Stella, or Ms. Ann Hart by May 17th. Summer school registration has begun. Registration forms are available in the guidance office. All classes are $25 with one class limit per student. Registration will be on a first come first serve basis and, only, and once the class is full, the class offering will be closed. Deadline for registration is May 17th. Seniors, time is quickly running out to apply for the Cuesta Scholars Program. Not only does Cuesta offer a low interest and forgivable loan program, but as Cuesta Scholar, you may also receive additional scholarship dollars to lower your college debt. Don't pass up this great opportunity. Gather up your information and apply today. Applications will be accepted at Cuesta Foundation's office until 4 p.m. on May 1st. In sports, softball, the varsity won over Plymouth 8-3 on Wednesday. Kylie Norris threw a complete game with six strikeouts Kylie Rosicek went two for three with RB, two RBIs, and the girls will travel to Memorial tonight. Baseball, the JV won over Plymouth 10 to eight, with Nick Anderson going three for four with two doubles, three runs, and an RBI. The varsity fell to Plymouth six to seven in the extra innings. Donovan Navarro went two for four with two doubles. The boys will travel to Goshen Friday, April 26. Let your parents know physical night is Monday, May 6. High school physicals start at 7 p.m. Physicals are $25. Stop in the athletic office for more information or check out our website at www.wawaseeathletics.org. And for today's lunch, a mastacchioli with one cheese breadstick or a corn dog. Choose three, a side salad with toppings, fresh fruit, milk, and fresh veggies. And for breakfast tomorrow, scrambled eggs, one hash brown, and one toast. And in case of a two-hour delay, we will now serve breakfast with no hot items. And from all of us here at WART-TV Warrior News, have a great day, Wallacey.